uh, iris that's gonna bloom. Phlox, lily, thyme, lavender. I'm forgetting if, if this is a rubecchia or coneflower. Uh, looks like petunia. I thought these might be foxglove, but I'm 90% sure that they're uh, they're petunia. More iris, uh, Cosmo, um, Daisy, Snapdragon, Daisies. I, my brain is stopped. I think it's a creeping sedum. I accidentally cut him a little bit too short there. Oh, more iris coming up. And then it just repeats. This bed, I'm trying to make it low maintenance with some perennials that are super hardy because this area is that devil strip. So the uh, soil is pretty crummy. But I put biotone in, compost, and mulch. I possibly will extend it further, but for now we're just gonna work with a half. In the front corner, it's been a few years for my smooth hydrangea, she's a lace cap. Um, and then this is a plantain lily and a, and a stilby. I thought this was a different variety, so that's why they're so close. I'm gonna end up moving this probably like right here, um, but he won't get that big this season, so I'll move him fall or spring of next year. But I had kept this area open because I was considering putting a front porch out here, but I'm thinking to myself, I'm never gonna sit on a front porch, so I may actually just go ahead and start gardening in the front. So we've got some nice black mulch. I've decided that was how I was going to mulch this year. Well, black uh, compost. And this year I got new basement windows. The old ones were just storm windows. They weren't good. So got some brickwork um, updated, put these guys in and decided to try to keep this lane pretty much clear, except for my two climbing roses, which I put in brand new this year from the old ones that were never doing well. I told you guys, I think last year, if they didn't grow, they were out of here. So I ordered some David Austin generous gardeners. So now I have moved a few things around. I had some more lavender here, but two of them went into the bed over here. So we're going to let these ones grow. Next to that, I have my poppies, which are just about ready to pop. Behind that, I've added in some hollyhock. These iris are about to bloom their heads off. My sedum, phlox, more beautiful iris. Here's my little generous gardener. I've got some more hollyhock back here. Uh, some versions of Rubecchia coneflower. This is a Dianthus. My hibiscus is coming in. I have a um, Delphinium bare root planted here, so we'll see if he comes up or not. Coreopterus and some probably Dianthus in here. Yep, I see some Dianthus. I see some California poppy popping back through. I took out, there were three salvias here, way too much. So I took one out and I broke off a little bit of a piece to manage the size of the salvia and spread them around the garden. This would be the first year I really used my perennials for uh, dividing and putting them in different spots because this sedum is actually a chunk off of those two over there. And I had moved last year, I think, the middle one because they were so big they were too close together so moved him out they enjoyed the space and i cut big half chunks off of them but you can't even tell they're still loving life right here so been able to add some sedum around the garden and i'm gonna get this area finally cleaned up hopefully but that is looking good can't wait for the color to start popping through especially 
the rose climbing. That's what I'm really excited for in this bed. But green and purple, it's very calming right now, you guys. Really, really pretty. I might throw in some footage of when I had the duh, daffodils and tulips going. I still need more in this bed, but it was pretty. Coming around, I have uh, added some new things. First, I'll swing over to the garbage area, but we have just screened in our porch and redid the um, roof panels. I've still got to finish up the work on that, but finally have a space that will be enjoyable without so many bugs. This is getting cleaned up, but this guy's doing really well. He's done really good. They're filling in beautifully. These are the cotton candy spirea. I've got a few annuals set in here and I'll put in, I have muscari and that was so pretty this uh, spring. I'm going to be hopefully either letting them naturalize and or adding more throughout the whole bed so that in the spring when there's very little up, I'll have that beautiful blue um, all over the place. And if it comes in different colors, I may get some other colors. You'll see flocks dotted around. That's another perennial. I just took chunks of it and I was moving it all over the place. I'm trying to get a tree root. They have gone to town this year. Let's see. There's a bunch of these little seedlings. I'm letting them grow a little bit so I can figure out what the heck they are. If they're trees, they'll come out. If they're a plant, I'll move them around. Uh, like I said, the muscari, I'm letting it do its thing. Somewhere over here, I think it might be that guy back there. I put a bare root of, oh, now I'm not gonna tell you what it is. But, um, so I'm just watching all the little things that are green to, grab things out that are not supposed to be in the garden. I put in some snapdragons and some violets are in here. These alliums didn't do well this year and our fertilia definitely didn't do anything this year. So I don't think I'll be adding fertilia back in the garden. It's just too much effort and the bugs tend to like it too much. So. We've got our delphiniums coming in. I had to get a new foxglove. I was trying to find out if I had spread a bunch of that seed. So I'm waiting to see some of the things I don't know if it's actually foxglove coming in. Like for instance, this guy right here might be foxglove. And if he is, then I'll move him. If he's not, then I'll pull him. But I think it might be a foxglove, hopefully. I want them to naturalize with him. He is absolutely just problematic. So I have to kind of determine what is uh, weed from, from, from plant. See, yeah, that's weed. This is some sort of Rubecchia, my sweet William Dianthus. I wasn't expecting this to do so well. So maybe next year I'll divide him and put him in other spots new addition. Can't remember what it's called off the top. I'm going to start trying to propagate my phlox so I can add that around some more because it's doing great. My bearded tongue. See more of my sedum. This is actually the one I moved last year. And I think I cut some of, cut some from this one as well. But I've got my iris. I've put in a few hollyhocks. Uh, my baptisia is actually going to bloom this year, first year. It's been in the ground a couple years now. Uh, again, not sure if that's going to be foxglove. If it is, it stays. If it's not, it's coming out. More Rubecchia lilies. That's a uh, phlox. It blooms in the uh, 
in the uh, fall and it's looking really good this year. It's taken it a few years to get going. Huge swath of daisy. I'm trying to have this be kind of a tall border because of my neighbor's stuff. So we're gonna help him by painting this stuff green this year. It'll help hide it, but this stuff I'm trying to get to grow tall so it helps trick the eye as well. This is me trying to suffocate out the weeds that grow here. And one of the worst ones is mint. <laughs> Somebody got let mint in the garden and now I'm trying to help control the situation. Down here was mostly just my spring stuff. I don't really have plant plants in here. I'll maybe work on that this season, not sure. Um, my peony are looking fantastic. The buds are getting nice and big. This year I tried the recommendation that you come up to a bud and if there were any side shoots, you pulled them off and it helps concentrate it to the main stem. And I don't have any that I can show you because I have been trying to keep up with that. So they're looking really nice though really really nice i'm excited they're really tall this year too and then again you'll see all the little purple that's just the flocks that i've kind of dotted everywhere i think the flocks is going to look good here because this area obviously shades out and i would really like to get around to painting this because it needs it but topping it up in compost because the soil level starting to tamp down so i'm trying to slowly add it up to help with that bed we're getting there. I can see past this. I'm sure when you guys see it, you just see somebody's trailer, but being in my picture. So hopefully we'll get this better disguised this year. But if I look down this way, I just see all my beautiful things. My Viburnum first year she's bloomed. I've had her in the garden, I think three years. So she is blooming beautifully and mostly just around the top. So I think next year she'll be full of bloom and big surprise, I had this big boy cut. So that'll help with sunlight for him as well. As you can see, I might've mentioned it, I might not have, I've extended my garden and did a couple different things for that. It gave us less grass right here. I was able to extend my path and these guys had a hard winter, <laughs> very hard as you can tell, but can you see the green coming back? So he's not dead. He just had a really rough winter. Um, oh, let me show you over here. So I put some iris in over here, some lily, some salvia, phlox, sedum. So these are a bunch of the little perennials that I am just dotting everywhere and letting them fill into a space. Um, again, some sort of rubecchia, I believe. This is the other little guy who comes up and he's like a vine of some sort. So I have to keep pulling him and they, um, these naturalizing violets. They're beautiful, but they are aggressive. Now, these are a welcome addition. These are forget-me-nots. Forget um, these actually might be bluets or forget-me-nots, I'm not sure, but they're gorgeous. And my neighbor has a bunch of them in her garden. They bloomed ahead of mine, so I'm happy. I'll let them do their thing here, let them be happy. I had a beautiful daffodils this year. Tulips look great. My alliums are starting to pop. He's a new addition. I cannot remember what it is for the life of me. It's like a, looks like a pink rose kind of, but it's got an interesting little foliage. So this is kind of the new middle of the bed where it used to be the edge. So I've moved things over as you can see, and then I'll start filling this in. He, this might be his new spot. Uh, my clematis looks very happy full of blooms, finally reaching near the top. And I went in, obviously, like I said, bought a foxglove and now I've got hollyhock in here. So I want this to be very cottagey, very tall and whimsical. My rose is doing well, added more sedum flocks and 
some snapdragons. These are the rocket series that get a little taller and I've put some of those in there just annual so they don't keep coming back. A small thing of daisies, my lilies, sedum, not a sedum, um, salvias. This is a shorter variety of a delphinium. So see how she does this year. That's new. So looking good so far. Again, I can't wait. I can't wait for this to be clean. We're sharing a dumpster with our neighbor, so I'm letting him get all his stuff in there before we go to town on ours. And I'm gonna be redoing the skirting of my porch as well. Oh, so happy to see it painted and screened in. And we added in this bed this year as well. Another one, he's, he's taking the longest, but he does have green on him. He has a lot of green. He was the best looking, so just kind of, I don't know what happened last year. It was even a warm winter, but they just didn't love it. So for now, this is all just gonna kinda play it by ear, but have our fountain, I put in some catnip, uh, lisianthus, snapdragon, and petunia, which are all annuals here. So this isn't a permanent display. This is just something to give me something going on in this bed. But what we plan on doing in this section, I wanted like field stone because that's beautiful, but I have a lot of these like little rivery rocks. So what I think I'm gonna actually do is pebble them in kind of like a riverbed with the grass growing between them. So it'll have a different feel, but more pebbly than, than the landscape rock because the landscape rock is expensive um, and I just don't have the money for that right now, so. But how beautiful is that, guys? Starting to really look like something. All right, so if we walk this way, my new little footpath, we have put in, this is my rhododendron I bought last year, but I didn't plant it. And so she overwintered in the basement. So did those guys, my hydrangea. I didn't want to lose them. I wasn't sure. I've already killed one rhododendron. So gave him a chance. He's a little bigger now and hopefully he'll establish. He's got one flower coming this year, but hey, I'm just happy. Hopefully I can keep him alive. And then three rhododendron that are pink that I got on clearance from one of the, uh, I think, Lowe's. Uh, so this is gonna end up being like a rhododendron border. And then I would love to make this hydrangeas across, uh, all through here. So we'll, I'm watching the light to see if this is good for them. So far, so good. And then I took the rocks from here to put them in the bed back there. So I'm gonna have to re-edge this up, but this is pretty much full uh, naturalizing these little violets or pant yeah violets antique whites and different colors so i just letting them go that's what i want i want a little bit of color in here so they're doing fantastic look at that so beautiful with our tree work this year he kind of clobbered this bed a bit so some things are a little tattered my uh, bleeding hearts are still, they, they never get very big. This is kind of their full size. And a friend of mine, hers get like at least twice this size. I did put more water on them this year to see if it helped. I think they just don't like being this close to this tree. So I'm thinking I'm gonna move them in different places, um, potentially over to that bed over there. But I got another hookera and my primrose is right there and then I dotted in some annual impatience I know I got something else oh this pretty little fellow back here he's also an annual I love the foliage on that and the lungwort does really really well here so he's happy he's got to almost be controlled he's so happy my plantain lily other than being pretty tattered he looks really happy this year he looks like he's gonna be, be pretty big this year actually might be the first year he's really taken up proper space 
I have my astilbe, my other hosta. This is some stone crop sedum or whatever you call it. It was actually in my back, kind of wooded, weeded area, and I watched it bloom last year. So I dug him up and put him over here so I can have some of him here. And again, dotting some flocks around. This right there is a peony from my neighbor that was kind of rescued. I don't know that it'll do well back here, but I just put him in a garden so he had somewhere to go. This creeping phlox is doing the worst of all of them, but it also gets the most shade. So I'll be um, taking clippings and see if I can root some more of this to spread it around. It's a really pretty hot pink color. This is my woo la la. She's doing all right again. Some tattered leaves from the wood, the tree work they did earlier on, but hopefully she'll kind of flush up and look better. And some more still be hosta. Again, gotta clean up my borders right here. We're gonna paint him green <laughs> and I'm gonna help them with this fence line. So that'll help kind of create some privacy here. But yeah, I love those guys, but questionable taste in <laughs> stuff to put in the backyard. So here's my hydrangea. I never have gotten really well success on macrophilia. So I'm gonna give these guys a try this year. Hopefully they'll make it through. You can see my azaleas are blooming from last year, planted, beautiful, like hot pink. You know, I like pink, but you know, certain colors can be a little bit much, but for a shade garden or partial sun, having a really bright pop of color is amazing. And by the way, this little fella right here, bad, bad baby. That is a brown tail moth. Oops. Let's see if we can show you better. You see those little orange dots on his butt? He's bad. He actually can create some allergic reactions. They are terrible in the area. Nobody likes them. I mean, they, they can give you asthma attacks, the whole nine. Their little hairs stick to you like barbed wire not great so when i see them i try to squish them but he's kind of on one of my flowers so for now i'll let him be but i have to be careful gardening right now because they're out i stick my hand into a bush i could come out with an allergic reaction so not fun i just have to keep an eye out for them because they're quite small still right now they do get bigger before they pupate oh there's another one so like i said i have to watch my hands when i stick them in anything and they, they are everywhere. Here's another thing I have to keep looking for. These treelings, I have to keep pulling them so that they don't uh, take up residency. And then another naturalized violet, but they're beautiful. I can't wait till they get big and create kind of a hedge here. But uh, yeah around to the other side I had to move him because I beginning gardener thing that I've done and you can even see it from here putting things too close so this is still be is flourishing but when these guys big bigger it'll crowd him so I need to move him out of here too so he got moved out to the outside and probably fall or spring he'll get moved to a better location, but he's really enjoying it right now. So if anything, I just need to pull him out. Woo la la, and I forget what this one's called, but I do have the tag on it. I love the chartreuse green of this one. It is a uh, shadow land coast to coast. Very pretty, very pretty. So this bed is just kind of a basic while I kind of work on other places. But like I said, I need to kind of move them around a little bit more. But, you know, trying to make every view beautiful and 
We're getting there. <laughs> Up here, somebody else likes to park their camper on this road. So it is what it is. But this is my flower bed I did last year with the natural meadow type situation. And this year I put in some of my perennials. So I've got, ooh, he's gonna bloom, Iris and Salvia and Lily and Cosmos and Daisies and a little bit of everything kind of that I can access. And I'm gonna end up putting in more seeds for annuals. So it kind of just becomes this nice big meadow effect. And here's one of the ones that wasn't sure what it was gonna be. Uh, I'm really hoping it's foxglove, but I don't know that foxglove branches out quite like that. So we're still waiting, still waiting, but I hope it is. My cosmos. Then I've got these bunch of little seeds right here. And I don't know if those are volunteer sunflowers because I'm not planting sunflowers. Um, they just don't do great for me. And honestly, it's just a pain in my side. So we'll see what these are. If there's some flowers, they can stay, but I'm not going to do the work for them like I have in the past years. So it looks very weedy, but it's kind of the point. It's just to let it do what it's gonna do. And then at the end here, I've added just a few bordery type things. So one of my astilbia I put here uh, a chunk of hosta from my neighbor, uh, some lungwort, and a couple other things. But this guy, looking good, right? Nice, good size, came from him. Look at this guy. He is massive. Doesn't even care that I took that from him. It's crazy. See the, all the forget-me-nots in her bed? That's what I want to happen. So, oh, I've put a couple, when I dig them up, I put a couple in there to hopefully seed them over. But I've been helping her with this garden this year. Excuse the saw. So I've been trying to help her maintain the look of it and hopefully get some color in here this year. So we'll see. I've been helping her in her front garden too with her lilac tree and some hosta trying to help them edge it a little better. And then this was me taking out some sod because we want to terrace this area and I was just bored one day to do it. My hosta ring is starting to fill in under the willow. It's great. But I'd like to drop this down to be more of the same level as this guy and then retaining wall that'll make it easier to work with too. It's all just kind of repeat of different plants, lilies, hosta, not hosta, lilies, iris, daisies, salvia. Oh, glad to see this. Um, these irises are gonna bloom though, because I wasn't sure with all the movement that's been around here if any of them were gonna take. But not a bad view. And then from here, this is our bridal veil starting to bloom. So pretty, so pretty. I got that from my neighbor the first year. And then this year I have put in Arborvitae. So I have cut back a bunch of this privacy back here in order to give these guys a chance for some sun to get them established. So this will all, you know, however many years that's gonna to take to create some interest. But at least in winter now, we'll have little spikes of green back here. And then I'll get to gardening more, but this is our May garden tour. No face, just walking you guys through. Hope you enjoy it. I'll try to do better next month. <laughs> it's been a busy, busy May. Bye guys.